conversation, fun, entertainment, whatever you get out of this video. I am not a professional. I don't get paid big bucks to talk sports. So please, this is just all in good fun. So if I say your favorite player is worse than another player, hey, it is what it is. My opinion is dumb, stupid, wrong. It doesn't make any sense. It is what it is. So make sure you do like the video. If you do like the video, liking the video is the biggest and bestest thing you can do for videos here on YouTube and for me. I would very much, very much appreciate it. And also make sure to subscribe for all the randomness that I post on this channel. Make sure to check out the rest of the content that I do make. And yeah, I think that's everything. If you want to, maybe comment down below maybe who your top three were if you do do this uh, quiz. Or maybe just down below, you can comment who do you think the best player in the NBA is. And make sure to check out the website as well. It should be pretty fun. So let us get started. So I had to screenshot all these so I can show you guys later on. Uh, I'm going to 
that's gonna be kind of wild if I'm being completely honest. So, I'm uh, taking Katie, but I do love Dame. LeBron James or Ja Morant? Oh my god. Um, oh man. Again, you know, if I'm rebuilding, if I'm a GM, I'm obviously taking Ja. I think we're, we would all probably take Ja, right? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I guess if you're building a title win now team, but then again, even then, you could have Ja Morant and still be perfectly fine. But LeBron, um, at least in my opinion, is still LeBron James. I'm picking LeBron James. I don't know if that's sort of controversial or not. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, we have Anthony Davis or Nikola Jokic. Um, if you were to ask me in the year 2020, I probably would have said Anthony Davis for sure. But nowadays, even at a fully healthy AD, not a lot of players can touch what Jokic uh, has done this season for sure, even though he has knocked out of the playoffs now. But that dude is just on a different level right now, and I cannot wait to see Denver fully healthy next season. Oh my god. Next season. Next season. Hopefully no no injuries. Knock on wood. I want to see nice fully healthy teams next year because that's going to be a lot of fun. Next up we have Zach Levine and Luka Doncic. I love Luka Doncic a lot, a lot, a lot. One of my favorite players in the NBA. Really excited to see him move on to the second round. We're going to be doing a playoff, uh, I guess, a second round video. I think not tomorrow for you guys, but the day after tomorrow, I think should be a, a, an NBA playoff talk video. Uh, Zach Levine, also one of my favorite players, but Luca can do it all. Uh, Rudy Gobert or DeMar DeRozan. Um, I actually, you know, I do like Rudy Gobert. I think he's a really good player, but for him to be a, a super max player, that's kind of a yikes to be completely honest, but uh, they, they, even then, uh, DeMar DeRozan had an MVP caliber season, definitely picking him. Okay, as you guys can see, the progress bar is barely even like like an eighth of the way done. Like, this is probably going to take a very long time, so maybe I'm going to be jump skipping. You're going to see a lot of jump cuts uh, maybe throughout the video, because as you guys can see, it's not moving at all. So I do apologize if I do see, if you do see a lot of jump cuts, because this is going to take forever if I just like sit here and just talk to you time. But let's do this one really quick with Kawhi Leonard or Jimmy Butler. Again, Kawhi pretty much in like what a year and a half now. I feel like it's been so maybe maybe even longer than that. I have no idea. It's been so long since we've seen, you know, a great Kawhi Leonard player. And Jimmy Butler with that Miami team has played very well too. But again, fully healthy. I'll still believe in, in a 30-something year old off an injury Kawhi Leonard because he is Kawhi Leonard. He's a great player. But even though Jimmy Butler has shown how a great a player he is. Oh, here we go. Here's a good one. Joel Embiid or Giannis Adentacumbo. Now, this is definitely, again, maybe sort of a more pick your poison type of choice. Um, I think Joel Embiid, obviously, MVP candidate. Giannis MVP candidate, but man, this could be like your choice for MVP on the entire season, to, compl to be completely honest, or even just the best player in the NBA right now. I mean, there's so many different ways you can look at this, but oh man, uh, man, Joel Embiid has had, has had one of the most dominant NBA seasons as a center that we've seen since obviously Shaquille O'Neal, and the way he can do pretty much uh, pretty much everything. He's not a great passer, but he can pass. He's not a, a great three point shooter, but he can shoot. Post work amazing, can rebound, can hustle up and down the court when he is, you know, healthy, which he's been very well so far. I'm gonna give a little knock on wood for that guy. But also Giannis is also that and and also a little bit more of a healthy player. Uh, I do love Giannis. I'm gonna say Giannis on this one. That was a really good one. Um let's see we have here, let's do this one real quick. Jalen Brown or Kyrie Irving. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. That that that's also kind of a, a toss up to me. To be completely honest, not because of just the series that they were both in, but even just overall right now, currently in their NBA career, I feel like obviously the ascension of Jalen Brown, the sort of like I'm not gonna say you know downgrade, but maybe a plateau in sort of Kyrie Irving and how he is right now. I still 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 think skillfully Kyrie is an amazing player, so maybe that's why I might rank him over Jalen Brown, but. Would I rather have Jalen Brown? Yes. Would I, you know, build around Jalen Brown? Yes. Um, but if we're just talking individually, skill-wise, talent-wise, I gotta go Kyrie, even though I would rather have Jalen Brown, if that makes any sense in this sort of argument. Here we have one with uh, Damian Lillard or Darius Garland, which is kind of funny because I just did a would you rather, like, this or that. 
this or that type of video uh, yesterday. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. But um, again, if we're just going off of this season, uh, Lillard definitely had a very subpar season. You know, the beginning of the NBA season for him was a rough, rough, rough start. But again, he was playing hurt for uh, many months, even in the Olympics that just happened last summer. He was playing hurt, and you could see that he, even in the Olympics, he wasn't all that great. So he just wasn't at full strength this year. I think next season we do see a fully healthy Damian Lillard. And even just thinking about a fully healthy Damian Lillard, I would pick him over Garland, even though Garland is an amazing player. And then we have your Lillard or Trey Young. Um, again, this season, Trey Young in, in the regular season played amazing. All the ups and downs at the Atlanta Hawks, he was definitely the consistent uh, sort of piece for that team. Couldn't really say that in the playoffs, but again, anyways, the fully healthy Damian Lillard is still a fully healthy Damian Lillard. I cannot wait to see what he can do next season after having all this rest and actually finally getting that abdominal surgery that he needed to have done for, for months and months and months. It's going to be really nice to see what he can do full strength again, so I'm picking Dame. No, <laughs> don't do me like this. Uh, this website is killing me. All right, we have Zach Levine or DeMar DeRozan. Uh, you can't do me like that. Both these guys, amazing teammates. Definitely one of the best duos in the NBA this season for sure. And man, the scoring output for the for, for this duo is what really makes them special. But I got to think about them individually now. And again, I keep saying that and again and again and again. You guys already know. You guys have heard me talk many times about both these guys. And um, I would rather have, if I again am rebuilding, uh, Zach Levine. He's younger. He's just as good of a scorer. If not even better because he does have that three-point capability. You can still drive to the rim. Obviously, one of the best dunkers in the NBA history. But if we are going off of just individual talent, what they can do, what they've shown this season currently, DeMar DeRozan, what a, a, a year he's had for this Bulls team and what really earlier on in the NBA season put them over the top for a lot of guys. Obviously, you know, when the season was sort of going towards the end, you saw a lot more of the holes this team had. But DeMar was a great player this year. Not saying Zach isn't, but if I'm picking between the two, I would rather have Zach. I would pick Zach. But I'm gonna pick DeMar because he just had a better year right now. Ooh, and now we have a really fun one with Jimmy Butler or Jason Tatum. Oh man, you guys know that the, the, the Jason Tatum hype is at the highest it has ever been. Ever. I mean, I remember when I was talking about Jason Tatum, you know, being a, a potential best player in the NBA one day, being able to win multiple MVPs one day. I got clowned on in that video. And now, finally, people are like, yeah, Jason Tatum, like, yes, thank you, yes, Jason Tatum, yes, I've been saying this. Um, but Jimmy Butler, that's also very tough, um, especially, again, currently. Ooh, man, that's kind of rough. Um, I would have to say, I think it's about time, like, you know, the expectation of Jason Tatum, but also the potential of Jason Tatum. I think everything is at, you know, where it's supposed to be. And I think it is okay to say how amazing Jason Tatum is and not how amazing Jason Tatum could be. I think Jason Tatum currently is one of the best players in the NBA. I think so. I think he's shown that. I think he's, you know, finally, you know, showing everyone, you know, he's not just that young guy who has amazing potential. He is one of the guys now, I would say. So, uh, love Jimmy Butler. Jason Tatum can just do a little bit more. Still a good defender. I think Jimmy Butler does have that on him still. And definitely also, like, sort of a playmaking ability. But... Everything else he's probably had shoulders above Jimmy Butler on. I'm picking Jason Tatum. Oh, God. Okay, another really good one. Um, James Harden or Chris Paul. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, I feel like sort of like the opposite with Jason Tatum when it comes to James Harden. I feel like he is at the, the all-time low in his NBA career. And people are finally calling him, you know, just an old guy. A guy who can't really, you know, do what he used to do. This and that. Um, which is sad to think about, which is, I mean, it's true. I mean, all the sort of NBA, you know, head guys, you know, Harden, Durant, LeBron, um, Kawhi, Paul George, like all those guys in like the 2010s eras are getting older. They're getting hurt a lot more. They're not really, you know, up to that level that they can carry franchise the titles anymore. They just can't, uh, which is sad. It really hurts me because the 2010s are like, you know, that's my era of basketball, like early 2010s, late 2000s, like, uh, makes me really sad, but. Um, 
anyways, oh, also Chris Paul when it comes to that sort of conversation, but again, this season, Chris Paul, uh, even with Devin Booker, could have had some arguments for MVP, and even though Harden has had some really good spurts of having amazing sort of times, he's also sort of fallen off and sort of had a lot of wishy-washy times. I'm not saying Chris Paul hasn't had that, but again, this season, I think Chris Paul has just been maybe more valuable, has just been more consistent, has been a better player, maybe. I think maybe I would even rather have James Harden, but I think I think I'm gonna say Chris Paul, even though that's a very close one. Oh man, um, we have Chris Paul and Steph Curry, which that definitely is not a close one. I think Steph Curry was uh, again, man. I think he was probably the MVP of the NBA for sure. Um, again, earlier in the season, he definitely had that in the bag, but Steph Curry for sure, for sure. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Anthony Davis or Damian. Lillard, um, both guys who definitely weren't that great this season due to, uh, health and other things, but, um, <laughs> uh, this is a toss-up, I think, if they're both fully healthy, um, and I think, if I'm being completely honest, if both these guys never had another injury in their, in their NBA careers, again, if they were 100% fully healthy, I think I'd actually probably take Andy Davis, because Andy Davis could put up, you know, 20, 25, 30 point games, but also have amazing stellar defense. Dame, he can put up, you know, a 40, 50 point bomb, but he's mostly going to be around that 25, 30 range, which again, like I said, Andy Davis can kind of do that too. But also that defensive capability is crazy with AD when he is healthy. Um, what we've seen from AD this season, even last season, I mean, we haven't really seen a great AD since 2020. And we also, what Dame did last season, not, you know, last season as in 2021-22. I mean, last season, we had one of the best playoff games uh, in NBA history. And I think he can still do that when he is, again, fully healthy. Definitely with a better team around him this upcoming year, hopefully. Ooh, knock on wood. I'm, I'm going to take Dame over AD. But, again, if there are no injury turnoffs, you know, like an NBA 2K, I'd probably pick AD. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Of course, they're going to give me this. God, this... <laughs> This little quiz thing is just killing me. Uh, Luka Doncic or Jason Tatum. I mean, like, can I have either one? I can pick my eyes and, and, and pick my eyes, shut my eyes, and pick one of them, and it would be the right answer. It doesn't really matter. Um, both these guys are great. Both these guys are going to be again in that conversation in the next, you know, five, six, seven years as being, you know, the, the best player in the NBA. The sort of guys sort of upset the LeBrons, the Katies of the world of right now. Oh my god. Um, again, sort of offensively, both very compatible. Defensively, you probably would give that to Jason Tatum, but, you know, passing ability, facilitating, also being part of the NBA game, 1,000% giving that to Luka Doncic. Again, you can close your eyes and just pick either one, and it's the right answer. Um, maybe the sort of conversation you could have would be like, if, if Jason Tatum was on Dallas, you know, would, how how good that team would be if they didn't have Luca? You know, it was it was Jason Tatum instead. I think they'd probably probably be close to the same spot they would be at. I think, of course, the playmaking ability of Luca Dodgers would really put him over for me. I love the defensive capability of Jason Tatum, and he can still grow in his NBA game. But I think I'm gonna say Luca Doncic. Is that bad? I don't know. Is that wrong? That's a this is such a tough one. I can I could really pick either one, but I think I I think I'm gonna pick Luka Doncic. I'm trying not to be biased either. I do really like Luka Doncic, but uh, I'm gonna pick Luka. All right, guys. I've been filming for nearly an hour. I've been filming for nearly an hour, and I'm barely over halfway. Like I'm sorry. 
just sort of ranks them every time I pick a player, maybe I'm assuming, but even then it's a computer picking for me basically, so here it is. Um, at 30, there's Rudy Gobert, 29, Carl Anthony Towns, 28, Darius Garland, 27, Donovan Mitchell, 26, Zion Williamson, pretty low on the list, 25, Zach Levine, 24, Jalen Brown, 23, Bradley Beal, 22, Paul George, 21, SGA, 20, Brandon Ingram, 19, James Harden, whoa, uh, 18, Trey Young, 17, Chris Paul, that's kind of crazy, um, 16, Kyrie Irving, 15, Jimmy Butler, uh, 14, Anthony Davis, 13th, DeMar DeRozan, really, whoa, um, 12th, Devin Booker, 11th, John Morant, 10th, Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum at the top 10, maybe, we might have to have that discussion, uh, 9, Damian Lillard, 8, Luka Doncic, I thought he would be higher on my listing, I was kind of nervous about that, um, 7, Kawhi Leonard, 6, Kevin Durant, 5, Steph Curry, 4, LeBron, 3, Joel Embiid, 2, Nikola Jokic, and number 1, according to this algorithm, whatever you want to call it, uh, number 1 is Giannis Antetokounmpo, um, whoa, that's really cool, isn't that really cool how it does that, I mean, I'm assuming, again, it just sort of like, sort of moves guys around every time you pick someone over someone else, I'm assuming, but I still think it's like a cool sort of, you know, way they do it on this website. So again, I really recommend that you do this. Um, I actually think my top 10 is really solid for how this sort of went. Um, obviously Giannis, uh, Jokic and Bede, MVP can uh, ca candidates this year. And I think that just makes sense for them to be in the top three for this year. I think yes, for right now, I think that's a good solid top three. Then LeBron, Curry, Durant. Yes, that's a good solid core of guys right there sort of you know, still high in the NBA tier, can still be amazing players, but to be the best player in the NBA, e, arguable, sure, and then you got Kawhi, Luka, Dame, I think that's not a bad sort of next sort of set of guys, I think a good, uh, fully healthy Kawhi Leonard at one point in time was a top five, maybe even arguably a top three player in the NBA, maybe a handful of years ago, but fully healthy Kawhi, I still believe it is an amazing player, I don't know if I'd put him over Luka though, I don't think I would, um, and then Dame, Barely in top 10, I think, yeah, I think 9, 10, 11, 12-ish, solid for Dame, and then, yeah, Jason Tatum, top 10. Is Jason Tatum top 10 right now in the NBA? I think the argument might be yes. I think you might have to argue more that he's not top 10, if I'm being completely honest. Um, John Morant's right there, I think that's very solid. Booker, DeMar DeRozan being so high on my list is weird, but again, if we're thinking about this current NBA season, I think DeMar definitely was in the conversation for a top 10 player in the NBA at that time. Uh, so I think that does make sense. Maybe. I don't know. That kind of looks weird to me. Uh, AD, sure. Um, who I think is too maybe low. Um, maybe Harden. Maybe Harden you can maybe throw up there. Maybe Trey Young, you could argue. I think he's sort of in that good range, sort of around 15. I think it's good for Trey Young. Um, and then if you look bottom of the list again, Rudy Gobert, I think yes, for sure, um, but Zion is 26th on the list, and I mean, I did pick him over some players, but then I did pick him under a lot of players, um, when I was choosing, and again, I, I, I guess I maybe took into too much of account of how hurt he is, but even then, you know, Donovan Mitchell under Zion, I mean, it does make sense if we are thinking fully healthy Zion, but if you're thinking about just him as a player, I mean, again, he's just so injury prone. It's just so hard. It's so hard, but I think individual talent, yes, I think Zion maybe should be up higher on this list. Like you have Zach Levine over him, Bradley Beal over him. Is that true or not? I don't know, but that's what that algorithm sort of calculated. So yeah, that's basically it for my, my, my little video. I don't know how long this is going to be. I've been filming for way too long. I am so tired. That was way more um, than I thought it was going to be. So make sure you guys try it out on the website in the description. Also, again, like the video if you did enjoy this video. Um, it's the best thing you can do for a YouTube channel and I would very much appreciate it. Um, and I think that's everything. Make sure you check out yesterday's video where I did